Hey guys, what's going on? Today, before I go for a ride, I'm going to show you guys my paint protection film and uh, talk a little bit about the process and how hard that was to put on. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I'd also like to thank you for the likes and uh, the subscribes and uh, just tell you how much I appreciate you. Let's have a look at that paint protection film. This is the area where I've got the paint protection film here. You can see it uh, starts right here. You can see a very light edge right here. It goes across underneath this line right here. And uh, since that's concave there, it was kind of hard to get, get it to stick to that. But uh, what I've done so far is I've put one four inch piece on there and it curls down to the underside of this slope here. So it goes all the way to the same spot on the other side. I figured that was gonna be the, the spot that got the most rock chips. So that's where I put it so far. I may put one more piece down here on the bottom, but uh, I think it turned out pretty good. And uh, it's been on for a few days. How's everybody doing today? I'm getting ready to go for a nice chilly ride today. It's in the mid 40s. So we'll see. To go somewhere where they've got premium. Let's see, I think we go to Quick Trip. All right. All right, breeze is nice and chilly, but not terrible. All right, hope that sounds okay. How's everybody doing? Doing fabulous here in Kansas City today. So putting that uh, paint protection film on, uh, it was it was awkward. I don't have a lift of any kind, so I couldn't really jack my jack my uh, bike up off the floor. So basically to put that film on there I had to lay down on my back and uh, first off you you get the whole surface is wet and you put it on there with the slip solution and I got that on there I got it on there and then you squeeze you uh, run your hand across and kind of push out you know the big air bubbles and stuff and get it positioned where you want it and try to get it to, uh, to put you know to stick and uh, on one side and you squeegee off one side and then you squeegee down the middle and got all the bubbles out of there But it turned out pretty good. There's a couple of tiny little bubbles that I could that I didn't get out I couldn't even see them down there when I was doing it, but it very very tiny and I got it right where I wanted it and got it just the size I wanted it. I think it's gonna provide some pretty good protection But that uh, it was a it was a pretty tough process and then I had to let it cure for a few days. I, after I was done, I got out a, a blow gun and warmed it up a little bit and smoothed out the edges just to make sure it was going to stay there. So, yeah, it, uh, it, I think it turned out pretty good for my first time I ever put one on. The first piece I tried to put on, I had a little bit of debris down there, there and it, it was so small I couldn't even see it on my white scooter paint. So, but uh, once I got the the film on there, I could see that there were a couple of, you know, just a couple of bumps. Basically, it doesn't look flat. And if I'd have been a professional, I could have just probably rinsed it out of there with the slip solution. That's what I saw on most of the how-to videos that I watched. But not being real sure I could even get them all out of there, I just took it off. Since I had, you know, maybe enough for four of those applications. So I just pitched that first one and put a second one on there. 
and it went right on. I made sure it was clean. I, I thought I made sure it was clean the first time, but obviously I did not. But I got it on there, got it positioned, got it squeegeed really good, got out like 99.9% uh, uh, of the air bubbles. That, and there was just one or two tiny little ones on there. I mean, the, the size of a, the head of a pin. And I didn't notice those until the next day after it was dry. And then I let it dry for another couple days. So it's, it's, it's on there permanent until I pull it off. So what's everybody been up to? I had a new subscriber who's a friend of mine. I want to give a shout out to her, Michelle. Thanks for subscribing. She came down and visited while she was in town this past weekend and we got to catch up on some on the old times and see how everything's everybody's doing and families and stuff. So it was sure nice to see you, Michelle. And she subscribed to my channel here, so she'll probably get a laugh out of me I would imagine but but everybody I've been doing well how's everybody doing hope you guys are all staying warm it's uh, mid 40s here today and it's I got let's see I got a couple extra layers on today today I wore a merino wool under uh, undershirt and even put the thermal liner in my uh, leather jacket and that has I mean that it, I'm not cold at all upper, upper body so I'm officially dressed for you know relatively cold weather if I want to drive anywhere too cold I'm gonna have to get some winter winter gloves these are not winter gloves these are just standard gloves with no thermal lining at all But I can handle this, this is just right. What's everybody been up to? Josie, are you getting uh, getting that full on, you got more than a foot of snow up there in Canada yet? Or again, I should say, I guess you had a, you had a foot snow last time I talked to you. Yeah, this uh, winter thing is going to get old really quick if it uh, limits the amount we can be scootering around. I normally go to a gas station a little closer to my house, but they don't have premium at that one. I noticed the other day when I was gassing up my SUV, so come over here to Quick Trip and get get some premium <laughs> I got my pin lock in my visor so far I haven't even had a one breath on the on the visor so it's working good for keeping my breath off of there but then again it's not 30 degrees out here either it's 45 that should matter Yeah, this uh, scooter is recommended for premium gasoline, so yeah, just like my my last car was premium only. I'm kind of surprised that my Lexus isn't. I 
should have got the hybrid Lexus. I'll tell you that. Put that under there. It's supposed to make it a little harder to get fuel because it shoots out of this thing every once in a while when you top it off. Two thousand years later. All right, back on the road. Well, my battery ran out. That's the first time that happened. My battery ran out and I forgot to put fuel additive in uh, to take over to the gas station with me. So I had to come home and get that in there anyway. I'm using some sort of fuel additive that I saw on Amazon to keep the fuel uh, stable over the winter in case I end up not getting to use it all or getting to use enough of it having it sit there in the the amount was oh one cap of fuel additive per two gallons so that's just happens to be what my scooter holds out for a afternoon stroll. Yeah, I got over there. I'm putting gas in and my battery goes dead in my camera. And I didn't have a spare on me. I have this uh, DJI Action 3. The battery lasts so long that I've never had to change batteries. When I plug my camera into my computer and take my video off of it, it charges it back up, and a lot of times it's almost fully charged after I've taken the, the video off of there because it plugs into the USB. And I'll be darned I didn't, if I didn't run out of battery. Well, that's, that'll teach me to pay better attention. I'll try to edit all that out, so who knows how it'll look. over here and explore a little area here I haven't really been to. I tell you what, my directions are getting a lot better here in Kansas City out here exploring on my Vespa than it ever was. I'm trying to learn the roads just driving around town in my car. Mostly because I never went places that I, you know, didn't need to go. Now I'm kind of cruising around looking for different spots I've never been and I found a few roads that go through here that I didn't even know existed, so. So what you guys been up to? You got that Christmas shopping done, don't you? Get her done. You only got a couple weeks left. And then Santa comes, kids. Santa comes and brings presents. Don't know what that area is there. I don't know if I'm gonna go down that way. But Santa will come bring you, well, maybe a few of the presents you want, if you're good. I 
I don't think there's any kids watching this video. They need high excitement. They don't need R&R. &R. Just chill out and relax. I should just keep driving straight. This goes into Liberty and they've got a, a restaurant over there that I'm thinking about eating at in the next couple days here. It's called Capriati's. It's a sub place. They've got a, a spicy cheese steak that is incredible. I might head over there in the next couple days and get me a sandwich. They've got an app that's running some sales and some promotions here. It's a nice big unused cemetery. This thing doesn't have many people here resting yet. Just a few there. This is 435. This goes, this is like a loop that goes around Kansas City for those of you that don't know Kansas City at all. That goes uh, pretty much all the way around. It's like a circle around the edges of Kansas City. Pretty much can use it to get to where just about anywhere you want to go. That guy was checking out the Vespa. Either that or he's just making sure he didn't run me over. That's always a good thing. This fire department, I guess there's no roads around it. sure what this road is but I'm gonna take it anyway I know it runs back into our golf course there that's beside beside my house so in, the, in that vicinity I took this in the opposite direction the other day and it was a nice nice little ride back through here the edge of these suburbs, the edge of this neighborhood. Oh, there's one for sale in there. I tell you, the houses go quick. Interest rates might have went up, but supply is low, I guess, and they can't, you just, I mean, you, every house sells in, I don't know, a couple days couple days and it's gone. Cattle pens. It's kind of a neat looking house. Kind of modern looking. Not very big. They got their Christmas lights on. Rolling hills out here on the edge of Kansas City. It's beautiful. What a pretty day though. I wouldn't complain if it was uh, about 70 degrees, but it's still not bad. Look at this nice little pond here on these houses. That is nice. here somewhere I believe all right yeah this is a nice road I love driving out on this road got its sidewalks on both sides the wind is howling we got about a 15 mile an hour wind and I'm going into it here.
it was weird earlier when I filled up my tank it took a while for that to register on my gas gauge there that gas gauge only had about three notches on it after I filled up until I drove back home and then uh, ran in grabbed me another battery came out and then it said it was full so I don't know if it just took turning off the, the gauges or something to, for it to register that's my guess of course I turned it off when I filled it anyway but it, it didn't register that the gap that the tank was full until I turned it back on ah, the engine has never got very warm today halfway up 50% I uh, was planning on starting my engine on and off this winter just to keep it kind of keep had keep it running a little bit but I uh, saw a video that that's bad for it so I don't think I gave anybody that advice but I did I did say I was gonna try to do it uh, in one of my other videos and I guess you're not supposed to do that if you can't really get out and ride it and get the engine fully warmed up I don't think you're supposed to do that so if anybody knows, I, I need an engine expert to, to answer these questions because put, I put fuel additive in and I'm you know, going to try to get out and ride it a few times, but I thought it would do it some good just to start it and let it run for five or ten minutes. And, but I guess if it's not under any load or you know, where you're really where you're really getting, you know, getting after it a little bit, I guess it doesn't warm the engine up properly and it can be worse for it than not doing anything. So anybody knows, I know there's a few uh, guys that do restores and, uh, you know, big time modifications to their scooters. If you could let me know, I'd really appreciate that. I know I do that with my snow blower. You know, I try to get that thing out and start it a couple times in the off season, and I think it helps it to. I, help, I think it helps it to function. I'm, I haven't had any issues with it, so. Here we are on the edge of the school zone, right by my house here. This is a prairie, Bell Prairie uh, Elementary School with the windmill on top there, and that's cute. It is a prairie, no doubt about it. And then this is Staley High School over here. My daughter's there right now. She's a cheerleader. She's got, uh, she's cheering for a girls basketball game tonight, so. I think it's at her, they're going out of town to cheer for a basketball game. So that might be, take, delivering her there might change my video producing schedule a little bit. We'll see. They're getting ready to let out for school. See that the cars are lined up there waiting to get out. What have they got there? Uh, 10 minutes till school gets out, I guess. I lost a little time with all that uh, running out of running out of battery. <laughs> oh man. Being new at this, I'm a rookie. Guys, I'm gonna call it a day, okay? Uh, I appreciate everybody watching it. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new here. I've really had the, the most fun I've had in a long time starting this channel and just getting out and riding around. So thank you all for being a part of it and I appreciate it. I'll be on again with another video real soon. Appreciate you guys watching. Bye-bye.